Hey everyone, my name is Riley and this video is a step-by-step -step beginners tutorial for OneNote. OneNote is a free note-taking app and is arguably the best note-taking app on the entire market. In this video, I'm going to show you everything that you need to know about OneNote, including how to actually get access to OneNote, how to set up and organize OneNote correctly, and then all of the features and functions that you need to know when using OneNote. This video is a complete step-by-step -step guide, so even if you have never used OneNote before, all you have to do is follow along with this tutorial and you will walk away knowing exactly how to use OneNote. Now, the first thing that we need to do is actually access OneNote. You can do this by going to the search bar of whatever browser you are in and searching for OneNote.com. We click on enter. This is going to take us over to OneNote. If you are not logged into your Microsoft account, it will prompt you to log in. And if you do not have a Microsoft account, then you want to go ahead and create one. So this is OneNote right here. And OneNote is essentially made up of different notebooks that you have. If this is your first time on OneNote, then we want to go up here and create a new notebook. We can create a notebook name and we can change this at any time. Let's call this test. Then we can click on create and this is going to go ahead and create that notebook. Just like that, this notebook is now created and I'm inside of the test notebook. At any time, we can come up here to the notebook and we can create a new notebook at any time. You may want to create different notebooks for different things. For example, you might have a school notebook and you might have a personal notebook and you can create new notebooks by clicking on add notebook here at the bottom and creating a notebook name. Now inside of your notebook, each notebook is going to be made up by these things right here called sections. So inside of my test notebook, I have this section called quick notes. If you want to create a new section, we can right click on this. And then all we have to do is click on new section. Then we can enter in a section name. So let's say we are creating this for school. We can create a section for history. Then we can right click, create a new section, and let's call this English. And then let's create one more for maths. So we right click, go to new section, and let's call this math. We can also go into each section and change the section color to help you get more organized with the different sections. For example, if I want to change history right here to yellow, I hover over this and then let's change this to a yellow color. You can see that tab has now turned yellow. So those are sections. Now within each section, we get pages and this is where we can create different pages that hold all of the notes that we are going to use. Let's create a new note on the history of Queen Elizabeth II. Of course, this is going to be in history. So I will go to my history note. And then I'm going to go right here in my first page. Let's call this Queen Elizabeth II. If you want to create a new page, then once again, we just go over to this pages area, the current page that you have. Right click on this, and then we can go down to add page. I now have two pages created in my history section. Let's title this one Ancient Egyptians. Now I have two notes that are within my history section, and we can do the same for English. If we click into English, you can see we have no notes in here. Well, let's call this Homer's Iliad. There we go. So we can see I now have my English section and my history section, and these both contain different pages. Let's now go ahead and start writing some notes about Queen Elizabeth. So we can click into the main section of this page right here, and this is where we can start typing. Perfect. I now have some notes in here about Queen Elizabeth II. Now, what we can do with this top bar along the top is this is how we can change how the text actually looks. So right here, we have the font, so we can change the font. And to change the font, we just want to highlight all of the text that we have. Then we can go up to the font right here and choose from any of these fonts. Let's change this to Times New Roman. As you can see, that text is now going to change. We can also go to this bar and choose the font size. So we can set this to 14 and that's going to change right there. This B button is going to bold. So if we want to bold certain sections, we can simply highlight this section. If I want to highlight Queen Elizabeth's name, click on the bold button. And just like that, this is now going to become bold. Maybe I want to do the same for the date right here, bold, and that's now bold. A few other things that we can do is italicize and underline. And once again, to do this, we just highlight the words that we want to italicize and underline, and then click these buttons. This is now in italics and it's now underlined, just like that. We can also change the font color using this button right here. So let's just take this little snippet for example. We can highlight this, then go up to the color 
and change this to blue. That text is now blue. We can use this section to format the text differently. So we can use this area to put bullet points into our notes and we can also use numbering as well. So we can go down and if I select this bullet point button, we can now go through and start typing out bullet points. Every time I go a line down, it's automatically going to set me up with bullet points until I don't type anything and click enter once again. Then it's going to break the bullet points and allow me to type normally. I can also grab text that I have previously typed, toggle on the bullet points, and just like that, I have now turned this into a bullet point list. At any time, if you make a mistake when you are typing in OneDrive, it's very easy to fix this. All we have to do is go up to this undo button in the top left corner. So if you remember, the last thing that I did was put these bullet points in. But if I click the undo button, those bullet points are going to be taken away. And I can basically go back unlimited times until I'm at the point that I'm happy with. The other thing that I wanted to show you is this numbered list. Very similar to bullet points, but we can toggle this on. And then we are going to get a numbered list like this when we type. We can increase the indent on our text using this button right here. So if I just go to the start of this line, toggle on the indent, you can see that that's going to allow me to indent further. Then we can decrease the indent just like this. We can also align the text using this section right here. So right now this is aligned to the left, but if I wanted to align my text to the center, I can do it right here. I can also align my text to the right. Perfect. So that is the home tab right there. Let's move over to insert. In insert, there is a lot of valuable things that we have here. First of all, we can input a table. So we just select the table and then we can choose the size of the table that we want to add in. Let's go for a five by five table. The table size is shown here at the top. So I will set this to five by five. And just like that, I now have a five by five table. From here, I can then click into each of these cells and start typing out what I want to type. And just like that, we now have a table that has been inserted into our notes. To delete this, just highlight the entire table. Then we can go back. And just like that, this table is deleted. Next, we can add in an image. So we can go to picture right here. And then you can choose to upload this from your computer. If you have a camera, so if you're on a laptop, you can take photos and add them into OneNote. And then you can also search the web. I'm going to upload mine from my computer. So we can select from file. Then select the image that we would like to add in. I'm going to go for this image right here. And just like that, this image is going to be dropped into our document. To increase the image size or make it smaller, click into the image and then you can see these white boxes around the side. We can drag these in or drag these out and that's going to make the image bigger or smaller. We can also move the image around by going to the center of the image until we have this cross in the center. And then we can drag this around to be wherever we want it to be on the document. Let's leave it right there. Another thing that we can do in this insert tab is insert a link. Maybe you want to insert a link to cite a source. This is what we can use the insert link for. For example, let's go for Queen Elizabeth right here. We can highlight this and these are going to be the words that the link is linked to. So whenever somebody clicks on Queen Elizabeth II, it's going to take them over to this source right here. So let's first of all copy the source that we want to cite. Then we can go back over, highlight the words that we want to link this to, insert link, and then we just paste this in right here. Then we can click on insert. The text color is then going to change and it's now going to become underlined to show you that this is a link. And then if we click on that, it's going to take us over to the article that we linked. We can also add symbols into the document. However, this isn't super relevant to this video, but we can add signs right there. We can also add emojis if you want to add emojis from this emoji tab. And that is the insert tab right here. Then we can go over to draw and pretty self-explanatory. This is just where we can start a drawing on the document that we have. So I just draw a little smiley face there, but you can draw whatever you want on any of this document. You can circle certain words, you can highlight certain things or strike under, and you can do this all from this drawing tab. We can change the color along the top and that's going to change the pencil color. And we can choose from any of these colors as well. We can also drag a ruler in and then the ruler is going to allow you to create straight lines just like this. And if I move these, you can see I now have two straight lines on either side of this ruler. Let's use the undo button to go back because this is looking very messy right now. And then we can click the ruler again to take this away. The view tab is also very helpful. So this allows us to get an immersive reader. If I click on this, it's going to read out the text that I have on my screen.
On the 6th of February, 1952. So we can use that right there. We can also choose the current zoom that we have using this panel right here. If I zoom this to 200, you can see that's going to zoom in a lot more. Then I can go all the way out to 50. And that is how my document is going to look. Let's go back to 100. We can also change the page color right here to a very light shade of certain colors. So we have red, we have blue, we have green. You can select your page color right here. And we can also add rule lines to the page that's going to look like this if we add them in. So those are the basics of OneDrive. The only other thing that you really need to know is once you have finished your document, what can you do with it? Now on OneDrive, everything saves automatically. So you don't need to do what you do on Word where you go into file and save. You don't need to do this. Everything is saved automatically. If I just back out to the OneNote menu right here, I can click back into my test workbook and everything is going to be saved within here. So I just navigate back to the history area, then Queen Elizabeth II, and all of my changes are saved. So let me just go back into edit the notebook right here. And the final thing is you can also share this file. So we can print this first of all, printing, we just print the page, or we can share. We can go share with other people, enter in the email of the person we want to share this to, then we can click send, and it's going to send them an email with your document. So that is my complete OneNote tutorial. If you found this video valuable, don't forget to smash that like button and tap that subscribe button. And until next time, take it easy.